what is a local church? Why am I even saying local church? Maybe somebody in here doesn't know, but the, um, certainly if you look at church history books, you look up church um, from a lot of secular sources or whatever, and they're going to talk to you about what is known as the church universal or the church Catholic. Okay, Catholic means universal. And what they mean is like this invisible, you've heard invisible church. They mean this invisible body that's made up of, of just, you know, the all one. We're all God's children. And, we're, yeah. and I, I want to say like made up of believers, but that's not even true because most people believe in that aren't saved. So, you know, yeah. so uh, uh, but the idea would be if we could make sense of that, and we could say, all right, let's say everyone is truly a believer the way that we understand believer. I mean, uh, you know, they, they understand salvation. They got saved. Then in a sense, we're all part of the church in the sense that, if man, if we all congregated in heaven one day, which we will, right? There's a, a congregation, an assembly. There's one, <laughs> one church. On earth, it doesn't quite work that way. When we're talking about a church, we're talking about a gathering of people, right? And that's why the majority of the time the Bible says church, it says church is. Right, the churches in uh, in Asia, you know, the seven churches, and uh, and a lot of times it's talking about a local body that's there. Now, what do I mean by local? I've actually heard preachers say this: like uh, uh, one person will leave one church and go to another church that's a little farther away. Anybody can relate to that. <laughs> and uh, I've heard somebody say, "Well, that's not your local church. Your local church is the one that's closest to you, your location." That's not what local church means, okay? If that was the case, you know, I've got a, we've got some churches that are pretty close to us that, and I know that's not what they mean exactly, but, but get out of, get that out of your mind. Local just means it meets in a location. It's a physical place where people meet together. It could be anywhere. You know, it's, the church isn't the building. The church is the congregation of people, right? And, and anywhere we're gathering in his name as, as his, as saved people who are uh, following him. You know, and I believe the great, a, a good definition would be a uh, called out assembly. This is a common definition, called out assembly of, of believers who have been baptized, right? And they're, and they're joining together for a purpose. We don't just go just, you know, hey, let me just show up at this church one time, show up at another church and not, not really have any direction. This is a group that's meeting for a purpose, right? There's a, they're kind of covenanted together to get this job accomplished, right? And I think that is a good definition of what a local church is. It meets in a, they meet together in a specific place, so it's not some invisible, invisible, universal, you know, it just exists out there somewhere. No, it's a, it's a physical location. And just real quickly, I don't know where everyone is on this. Um, I had a friend uh, contact me recently, and he's gotten into dispensational pretty heavily over the years. And, uh, and he started talking about when the church started. I don't know if anyone's ever even heard this before. Anybody got, have anybody talked to someone that says, you know, ask when the church started? Like when did the church begin? Okay. Uh, well, the dispensational type view, and what I mean by that, just in a nutshell, meaning that, uh, you know, God dealt, this is typically what they believe, God dealt with Jewish people a certain way, and at some point, Jesus ushered in what is called the church age, right? Where these are now his church. He started his church, right? And so what they'll often do is go to maybe Acts 2, where they're all waiting for the, uh, let's just go there. Let's go to Acts 2, uh, 47. Um, this whole chapter, really, there's there's several places in this chapter you could look and see the uh, how the uh, the church works. Look at for, verse 41, actually. Then they that gladly received his word, they were saved, were baptized. Now they're saved and baptized, right? And uh, in the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. All these are added to the church. They've been saved, baptized. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread, uh, 
did uh, from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So even the word church is used right there. And he says he's added to the church daily, right? Uh, and they're going out house to house and they're build, building the church basically. Now, if you backed up to, uh, for the sake of time, don't, you don't have to turn there, but if you backed up to Matthew 16, when Jesus talks to Peter and he says, and he's talking about the church, upon this rock, you know, who's the rock? Who's the foundation which the church is built off? There's no doubt about that. The foundation is Jesus. No other foundation, you know, can, can you build on. And, uh, and he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then you get to Acts 2 here, and it says, and he added to the church daily, right? So I hold to the fact that the church began somewhere between the part where Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates will not prevail against it. And when he added to the church, there must have been a church there, right? Well, there was this congregation of, of believers. This is what we call the early church, if you will. And what was the foundation? It was that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. And they're saying, hey, this is a foundation, right? So he died, and when he died, he began the church. He already had a group that was following him, right? But he was instituting, he was teaching them things. He was teaching Peter some things, by the way, uh, preparing him for whenever he was gone, now we're going to start this. That doesn't make Peter the first pope, okay? I'm not saying that. But he said, you're going to lead these guys. And then later on, it broke off into different sections, uh, individual, individual, local, independent Baptist <laughs> fundamental churches, right? Amen. <laughs> okay. I just had, I just needed an amen, so I thought I'd throw that out there. <clears throat> so here's the thing. Some dispensation will say, no, 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 no. You know, I don't believe this could be, these are all Jews getting saved. And if you notice, there's signs and there's miracles. And if you notice, uh, you know, there's, there's all these. And they read into that and say, those are things that the Jews are supposed to do. They say the church didn't start until mid-Acts uh, mid Acts, which would be around Acts 9, because Paul got saved. And when Paul got saved, he started the church, right? Because it just, he, the church was the Gentiles. And so they're separating. This is the whole dispensational idea, separating them Jews from those Gentiles, right? And so the Jews weren't part of the church. The Gentiles are part of the church. That doesn't make any sense in, in, in the definition given all throughout the Bible. Jesus started his church. It wasn't like the, he started the Jewish church, and then later on he's going to start the Gentile church. He started his church, all right? So, so I don't believe in a mid-Acts, or, or some people even say Acts 13, because Paul hadn't actually gone on his missionary journey yet, so they say that's whenever the church started. Look, Jesus started the church, right? And from the very beginning, they were meeting together, they were assembling, they were a church, and they're waiting, you know, on what's, what's next, what do we do, Lord? And uh, anyway, so, uh, so, so this is what we're talking about. And today, <clears throat> I believe, you know, there needs to be a local assembly where you can meet, a place where you can go, physically be there. I'm all for preaching. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just share this real quick. Uh, look at Acts 20 real quick. So this is certainly nothing I made up. You will hear this all throughout the world this time of year. Because we're living in, I mean, uh, not 19, living in the year 2020, right? And so everyone's going to talk about 2020 vision. Look at Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. Acts 20, 20, Paul says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. And so really, if you think about this, just comparing all scriptures, I won't t jump to a whole bunch right now, but you could go anywhere where God's uh, talking about the church and they're building the church. And here's what you'll see. They met in, for the most part, private places, right? I believe the church is pretty much a private thing. We can control who comes in and who, who doesn't come in. If somebody comes in uh, and I'm ta you, you talk to pastors and they, it's almost like we have to allow anybody in here that wants to come in here. That, I don't see where that, I mean, if, if, if that's true legally, you know, well, because you're not paying taxes or whatever, you know, well, then make me pay taxes, right? But this is a private organization. We can decide who comes in, who doesn't come in, right? On the authority of, of the scripture, right? Amen. And so, uh, and so uh, I, I, I believe we need to, there needs to be a local body that's, that's kind of private, 
okay? Again, that doesn't mean if someone comes, we're just necessarily going to kick them out. But uh, I understand people think uh, of church a little bit differently. There needs to be a place that is, uh, is more private. But then what's our goal, right? We go door to door, right? We go door to door. We knock. Uh, we try to get people saved, try to get them saved, talk to them about baptism, get them inside the church so they can be added to the church like we saw in Acts, Acts chapter 2. And so you see you got this more of a private uh, discipling and teaching and preaching. Then you got in the community knocking doors, going door to door. Not uh, Also, that would include, I think, also following up on people who, uh, for some reason or another, like in our case, we got a lot of older p- folks who have health problems and can't come to church. I can take the word to them and I can preach to them and all. We go to nursing homes and different things. But there's lots of ways in which we do that. And then he said, I preached unto you publicly and from house to house. Now, what's publicly? Now, back then, what publicly was, they'd go to the temple, Solomon's porch, huge area where a lot of people were, and they would preach the gospel. Paul's custom was to go into synagogues, and if they let him preach, he'd preach the gospel. They'd go into the marketplace and preach the gospel. Paul goes on Mars Hill, Mars Hill, where, where all of them met together to hear some new thing, and he takes opportunity of that to preach the gospel. He wants to get it out there, right? He's preaching publicly. Now, uh, in today's age, I feel like that's the Internet. <laughs> I can preach, uh, you know, door to door. And we sh- don't get me wrong. We're not going to slow down on door to door. I think that's a very <laughs> good and needful way to do it systematically door to door. But there's also a need, I think, to get the word out there in a larger scale. Throughout history of the church, people have done various ways of doing this. When radio came out, preachers said, huh, that's a good avenue. I'm going to get a radio station and get that broadcast out of there. And other preachers were saying, hey, that's of the devil. You know, Satan's through those airwaves and all that. That's wicked. We don't need that airwave stuff. And then all of a sudden, it's like everybody had a radio station, right? And everybody uh, had phone books and everybody was getting with the times, right? And then uh, TV came out and some people were getting... Uh, their message on TV. There's no good TV preachers anymore, but <laughs> they'd get on TV and they would preach. And other guys would say, oh, that's of the devil, man. We don't need any TV preachers and all that kind of stuff. And uh, nowadays, it's, it's Internet, right? Everybody has a presence online. Now, we're not, I'm not very good at marketing, you know, any preaching that I do, and I can understand why people wouldn't necessarily be drawn to listen to, <laughs> to me preach, but I think that we have a responsibility. Hey, hey how can we get that out there? I mean, I, I, have, uh, I have the possibility of posting something, uploading it online, and a thousand people instantly see it within that day, two days, three days. I can maybe see a thousand people. Now, wh- what are the chances we're ever going to get a thousand people to assemble in here, <laughs> right, at one time? So I'm not saying that should be our main focus, but I'm saying that is an avenue in which we need to think. Like, how can we reach more people and get that out there? These are things that I believe... Uh, is important and that we should do in the local church. So, so no doubt we need to be local. We need to be independent. Nobody else out there is going to tell us how to run the church. If you see that, that's dangerous, man. And uh, uh, I was just talking to somebody about this. Um, obviously, many of our friends are new IFB, but just recently there was a little bit of a falling out among some people where they said, you know, hey, Pastor Anderson is associating with you know, other people that we don't agree with. And so we're breaking fellowship with him. And I say this, I I mean this with all my heart. I think that's one of the greatest things that could happen to the new IFB movement. There's some bad about it. There's no doubt about that. But here's what I mean by that is that we should think independently. And our body, you know, if they rely on their pastor, great. Now, if their pastor does some knucklehead thing and they have to split from their pastor, uh, there's a time for that. But this local body with the pastor leading them, they should be able to think independently from these guys, Amen. right? And so, you know, I might not like some of the decisions that were made, some of the splittings that were, that were you know, where they split up, but overall what that proves is that these are independent lo- local bodies and they don't rely on one guy to make all the decisions about what we're going to believe or how we're going to conduct ourselves, right? And so that's my desire for this church is that it's never like, let me explain it this way, and I'll close with this, Okay. I got to thinking about, all right, how does a church, every church takes on a little bit of a personality, right? There's some way, you know, something different about that church. A lot of times the personality has to do with the pastor, really, if you think about it. An older pastor, 
a lot of times has an older congregation. I don't know what happened in Iola. But, <laughs> but an older pastor usually has, maybe it's my personality, uh, has an older congregation. Younger pastor, younger congregation. Fireball pastor, very fervent, zealous people in the congregation. Usually that's how it goes. You're going to follow the, the leader, right? And you want someone to lead you who is, is kind of like you. So I got to thinking about how churches are. So let's use this example because uh, it has to do with building, right? And the church is, is supposed to be building the church and well, Jesus is building the church, but you know what I mean. And, uh, and I got to thinking, building Legos, right? Who, like, who doesn't love Legos, right? And it's, and it's been timeless, like, I don't know, if maybe it was an accident or what, but whoever came up with, with Legos, man, he was just like a trailblazer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there were no, I don't think there was like a, a evolution into Legos. I don't know what was before that, but it was just like Legos, man. It just stuck. It's timeless. It's happened, you know. And I think some churches are like that. And, hey, we're, this is how we're going to go. And uh, they kind of blaze the trail and all that. And then I thought, okay, here's another type of church. That's not necessarily bad, but uh, there's a company out there, maybe Wilco, I think, makes it, and they put out a, a, a something called Blocks. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> blocks. And what Blocks are is they look just like Legos. <laughs> maybe cheaper, I don't know, but uh, they said, hey, this guy, you know, has got a good product, and everyone's buying that product. We're going to just go be just like that just like that company. And I think Wilco makes other things, but they said, hey, we want to get on board and sell some of these, sell them a little bit cheaper, whatever people. <laughs> so there's a lot of churches. We're not selling anything, but there's a lot of churches who are like, hey, we want to be like that church. And I can fall, I can fall into that. You know, we spent a long time at Southwest. I love the way they did a lot of things. It was a big church, had a big bus ministry. And I remember being all on fire, you know, and we, and we came to work in Iola. And I'm thinking, hey, here's, here's someone went from a church of like 2,000 with like 22 bus routes to a church of like maybe 50, 60 at that time and like one van, right? And I'm like, well, here's how we did it at Southwest. And here's how we, <laughs> right? In my mind, I'm sitting there thinking we got to be like that church. And I fought against that. I, didn't, I knew that was wrong way to think things, but sometimes I was like that. And sometimes I find myself nowadays looking at other churches and saying, hey, here, how do they do it? Well, how can we be like them? And look, in the end, it's not necessarily wrong. If they got a good thing that's working and we're like, hey, we don't know what else to do, so how can we be like that? It's not necessarily bad. It's still getting the job done. But you got some people that are like Legos and some people that are like blocks, which is trash. He's like, no, I'm just <laughs> it's not trash. It's just not as good as, <laughs> it's not a trailblazer, right? It's not as uh, successful either. Uh, but then you have this, and I like this, all right? Lincoln Logs. <laughs> Who's ever played with Lincoln Logs, right? That goes way back. And I still love it. Hey, you want to build a log cabin out of Lincoln Logs? Go for it. But have you ever noticed they're pretty limited in what you can do, right? And it's like they didn't ever really get with the times. <laughs> Not much you can do anymore with Lincoln Logs. And I'm afraid sometimes churches are just kind of stuck in the past. And they're like, no, we can't do anything different. We got to stay right here. And, and you know, we'll die being Lincoln Logs, <laughs> you know, and one day it's like the, you, you know, like they're the part of this museum and say, oh, I remember those days. I remember the old IFP of, of yesteryear and, and the ancient landmarks. Don't remove those landmarks and we need to be like that. You know, we got to be careful not to ever get stuck in that point, you know, uh, and I'm not saying we got to be like Legos, <laughs> right? But as a local church, I think we got to realize who we are and say, hey, how can we be the most useful for the Lord? How can we do what he's called us to do? How can we get the word out there into the public? And how can we knock on door, go door to door and do the functions that the church is supposed to do and see the most results for the, the honor and, and glory of the Lord, right? So that's what we got to do and not think about what everyone else is doing or what they used to do many years ago. But what does the Lord want us to do? Amen. I think that's the, uh, the goal of the church. Incidentally, Acts 2020, kind of like my uh, theme for the year as well. So, uh, again, not new to me. I'm trying to be like uh, Legos. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your, uh, uh, just the, for dying uh, for the church. And, and Lord, we think of, of uh, just the church that we've been able to be a part of. You know, I, I'm thankful for churches I've been able to be a part of in my life good churches, solid churches, 
and uh, certainly nowhere will we ever go where we believe 100% uh, exactly like uh, everybody else. But Lord, I pray that you'll help us as a uh, kind of an organism, an organization that we would uh, uh, be on the same page and work together and grow and see uh, see this work prosper, Lord, for your honor and glory. Help us have wisdom. Help me as a leader to be able to, to lead and portray the vision uh, that you've given. And uh, help us all to be strong and faithful in, in uh, holding fast to what you've told us in your word that your church should be like and how we ought to behave ourselves in the house of God. And I pray, Lord, that you'll just guide and direct now in Jesus' name. Amen.